Hey guys, welcome back. Richie here from RW Hobbies. Today we're going to start a brand new build series. It's going to go on for about two years. And it's a one eighth scale Eleanor Mustang from the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. This beautiful car, 67 Mustang. You heard me right, one to eight scale. So it's going to be massive. Um, big boy for sure. So let's go ahead and get started with parts one and two. Hey guys, so yeah, something way different. So, you know, I love my aircraft, but I also love my vehicles, but I don't build many cars because I suck at doing glass work um, and get a perfect finish. So when I came across these part works, it kind of sparked an interest for me because I can still build and maybe do some weathering and stuff. But when it comes to actual overall kind of paint work, I don't have to worry about it because it's already painted. So let me start a little introduction about this project and then we'll get going on parts one and two. So let me just make, kind of take a couple, couple of minutes. So this is, um, as I said, it's a one eighth scale Eleanor Mustang, which is a six, 1967. And that's the actual real size of it there. So it's going to be, I wrote down here, it's going to be 22.9 inches long. It's going to be 17.6 pounds in weight because most of the stuff is die cast metal. Um, so that converts to just under eight kilos and um, it's 110 parts. So how it works is, this is actually from Eagle Moss, a company called Eagle Moss. So you subscribe and um, basically what happens is they send you a couple parts that we have here, we'll look at in a minute. Um, so they get you, entice you with a low, low price. So I think the first two parts was like $1.95 shipped, that's it. And then what you do from there on in, they supposed to send you four packs or four of these like little parts every 21 days and they'll bill your credit card for that. And then um, it takes about two years. So it's 110 parts and when you do finish 110 parts, you're gonna end up with a finished vehicle, hopefully. Um, there's been some problems with these part works in the past, I think back maybe 10, 20 years ago where they started these things, they didn't quite finish them. The company had some issues or whatever. Um, not necessarily Eagle Moss, but just generally. And um, since then, they, I think some like, like laws came into play, especially in the UK, um, where you covered. So if you, if you sign up for part works and they don't complete the whole 110 parts, they reimburse you for the whole thing. So just bear in that mind if you're a little bit apprehensive. So there's a few different companies out there. There's um, Eagle Moss, who produced this one, the Eleanor. They also have the Ghostbusters, Ecto-1. They have um, DeLorean from, from um, Back to the Future. They have a couple other ones too. Then there's one you might have heard of too is Model Space, which is Diagostini Publishing. And um, they also run by Fan Home. There's a couple of different like kind of brands there. So they do, in terms of cars, they do Dodge Charger. Um, actually, to be honest, they're, they're pretty much everything's sold out for months. You can't buy anything. I think they've got supply chain issues and every, you've got a website, you can't find anything pretty much. Um, you also get things like um, Iron Man, like a big Iron Man, Terminator. I think that's actually Hachette do that one. Um, so there's all different like pop, pop culture things you can get. Oh, and the model space also do like Star Wars stuff. So you get a big giant X-Wing, you get a huge Millennium Falcon, all that kind of stuff. And then there's Agora Models as well. They're another big player. So Agora Models does um, a really nice um, Shelby Cobra and um, a Super Snake Mustang as well. So that's kind of a summary of what's going on here with the part works world. Um, they all work works pretty much the same way. Every month or so they send you stuff. You can pause at any time. So if you're halfway through the build, and like a year in, and you have some kind of work issues or medical, whatever, unfortunately you have any kind of life events, you can hit the pause button and just restart whenever you want, basically. You can also speed it up, so it's, it, it's at, the default is every 21 days, but I don't think you buy the whole pack at once, but if you want to like kind of speed it up and maybe get like, um, maybe like eight issues every 21 days, or four, that kind of stuff, you can call them up and you can change your schedule, no problem at all. So it does come with a few free gifts along the way, nothing amazing, like a poster, um, a license plate, um, binder and that kind of stuff um, but that's pretty much it so the car itself like I say it's um, right there so it has a few little gimmicky features um, so it has a full engine the engine's a little bit kind of toy like on this one unfortunately for the price um, it does have sound lights all that kind of stuff um, so it does have cool little bells and whistles on this um, what I should note too is I didn't I wasn't sent this. A lot of parts where people on YouTube get sent these things for free. I actually pay for this. I'm paying for this out of my own money. So what you'll hear from me on these videos would be an unbiased, um, true like, review and representation of this. Because again, it's my own money I'm paying for this. I'm not being sent this by Eagle Moss. Um, so that's really kind of it as an introduction. So like I got the first pack here. So we'll go for it a little bit in detail in a minute. Basically, I got this kind of pull out. Again, kind of explains, you know, get actual size and explains what's going on, what features and stuff. Um, 
details I get. So the first two parts, part number one is the front grill. Part two is one wheel. Then you got little booklets. Every every four packs you get every 21 days, you'll get one of these little booklets. So the booklet, again, we'll look at this in more detail in a minute, but basically it's the instructions that also has like really cool information about the movie and the car and that kind of stuff in there. So again, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute. And plus you got a poster. <laughs> and what drives me crazy, it's the same with all these part works, people. It's all folded, like why do you fold a poster up? Because the box always comes in, is a decent size. So I don't want to just don't roll a poster. So now it's folded, so there's a million creases in it. But um, here's a poster if you guys are, again, it's a little bit teenage bedroom wallish, but there you go. There's a poster. Um, yeah, probably cost like 20 cents to manufacture or something like that. Um, but again, full of creases. I, I don't know why you guys do, why the guys do that. Why don't you just roll them up? I mean, it's it's not like you're taking extra packaging. So like I said, the box that came in is way big enough just to roll it. So now I've got all these creases and stuff to contend with. Um, anyway, I've got to figure out how to fold this back up again. If it goes, I don't know, I'll do it later. Um, cool, so that's what we've got going on. Um, a few things I've purchased to help me with this build, um, which you might, if you're doing this, you might find useful, is um, three in one oil you get from any kind of hardware store. Now, I've been watching a few of these, and everybody on YouTube does this. So if you have metal screws screwing into metal parts, they put a tiny bit of this oil on to help lubricate it so that the, the screws don't shear and just screws nicer. So I'm just jumping the bandwagon and doing what everybody else does. This is my first part works die cast kit. So three in one oil. I went to the um, Lowe's and picked up some nice Craftsman needle nose pliers. Again, like five bucks, but nice quality. I think I might need those. Now, it does come with a screwdriver in the first part here, but the screwdriver is probably like when you buy these Tamiya model kits, they're probably a little crappy. So I went ahead and splurged and got myself a nice um, precision, precision sc screwdriver kit from Amazon. Now this is like $14, I think maybe less than $14 to be honest with you. So these aren't much money at all, but they're really nice quality. Magnetic, which is nice, so you can pick up the screws and stuff. Um, so I'll put links below all my stuff I bought here. So again, it's not much money really involved, but just, it looks more expensive than it is. So nice precision screwdriver kit. Went to Hobby Lobby and picked up one of these guys for like two bucks. Um, just for beads, like sort of beads and stuff, but this is gonna store my screws. So I can label them all and keep my screws separated. Um, these dividers all, we can move them take them out, move them around and stuff. But again, like two bucks from Hobby Lobby, you can't go wrong. So again, I think it's like for beads and crafts and stuff. One of those, um, went to the Dollar Tree, um, Dollar Store here, and obviously for a dollar, I bought a nice Tupperware. So I figured um, I can keep my parts and that's keep nice because what's gonna happen is you're gonna build stuff along the way. Like we're gonna build a wheel, we're gonna build the front end, and then you've got to wait a couple of months till you can actually do something with it. So you just need something nice to kind of keep it you know, from scratching and stuff. I'm talking of which, finally I bought a pack of these, um, pack of three, basically car towels for car, car detailing. Really soft, fluffy, microfiber. So what we're going to do is when we work with metal parts, we'll put this down on the bench. So then um, we're not going to scratch anything. So keep it nice. Um, also, I put one in the box um, to keep things nice as well. Again, not tons of money. I think I want to think I want to pay. I think I paid about um, twelve dollars maybe or something for a pack of three. So. Again, we're not talking tons of money on these things, and this, again, will last forever. Um, nice microfiber, and um, again, not huge, but I mean, you put a couple of these together as the car builds up, um, and just stop it scratching, because paying all this money and spending all this work for two years on a car, the last thing you want to do is scratch it all up, right? So that's a worthy investment as well. So that is basically what I got um, in the pack and what I bought to help with this purchase um, as a brief introduction to the project. Um, like I said, we've gone for about two years. Um, as Every 21 days or so as I get parts, I'll throw them up, build it, throw it up, and you guys can watch it and help watch along my, my progress. Um, won't affect any of my usual videos. I still throw out my aircraft ones on a Friday and my reviews and stuff. It's just this, little, this is an extra little project um, I follow for up on my channel um, for those who find it interesting. So yeah, so let me kind of clear all this away, um, get the towels down, and um, we'll kind of go through the book and we'll start with part number one. Alrighty, so we're down on the bench. So I've gone ahead and put the screws we're using into um, my little container, put a little, a little OCD. So my little label maker I made, so D's and P's. I'm guessing um, P's for plastic, D's for die cast for metal. Um, so that's what I've got set up here. So I can close this. And what I've done is I've carefully opened this pack one and I put those two packs of screws in here. Um, so here's the parts looking really nice. Again, you can kind of see just the 
finish and the paint working. I do have a size too, how big this thing's gonna be. Um, so I'm just gonna put this to the side. Let's go look for the magazine real quick. So here's the actual model itself. Um, working brake lights, interior, metal bodywork, opening doors, moving front wheels, working front and rear lights. Unfortunately, the side lights don't work, just the main spotlights and the, um, the main beams. I am not gonna touch the outside paintwork, but I will go ahead and probably weather or maybe paint or detail paint the engine and the interior um, using my usual like modeling paints and stuff like you know my more normal kits, but obviously the outside, um, this kind of gun metal, it's not gonna be touched at all by me. Here's some more information about the vehicle. I'm just gonna flick through this quick. If you wanna see more of it in detail, you can pause it. It's on the website too, I think, the Eagle Moss website. There's the engine. And then we get into the instructions, which we'll talk about in a minute. I'm just going to skip through those. Um, and then we talk about the vehicle itself. So from the movie. And I think this recently sold, one of the movie ones recently sold for about $2.2 .2 million, I think. Again, talking a little bit more about the movie. We'll read that later. There's Natalie, the Porsche. 356 Speedster. Some beautiful cars in here. Dodge Charger Daytona. Vanessa. There we go. And what's up next? So, skipping forward a little bit here, but it looks like we've got some engine stuff, um, a seat, the hood, and um, brake disc and caliper coming up um, next time. So, that's kind of flicking through what you get in these books. You do get a little binder coming up, one later parts, so you keep all these in nice, so keep them nice, and so you read back and all the information later and stuff. Um, but first of all, we're gonna do part number one. So what I did realize it, my screwdriver I talked about just now, it's not magnetized, I need to magnetize it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the one coming to kit for today. Um, and then future parts, I'll get this magnetized and we'll use the, the nicest screwdriver, I guess. So part number one, we're gonna work on assembly here, so it looks like we're gonna work through um, the front face, adding some like reflectors and lights. And up to the M2, should be more straightforward, just basically putting the rim onto the wheel. Onto the tire, sorry. So we've got to boil some, boil some water, throw the tire in so it gets malleable and more easy to work with, and um, throw the rim in basically. Um, cool, so let me put this to the side. I'm gonna get my uh, oil out and all the rest of the stuff and we can get going. Okay, so got this beautiful front end on here. First thing we do is part number 1.1 is put the headlights in. So you see there's a right and a left on the back. There's an R on the back, which is the right. So it's gonna go on the right side. Just sits like that. Then the left. It actually falls through, so I just guess I'll just do one at a time. And we're gonna use the DS2 screw, the metal ones. So I'm just gonna dip it. So these are my little gun, I use for mixing paints, my models and stuff. Um, these are just little like, like sauce kind of like um, cups with lids. Um, I get a pack of like 100 on Amazon for like six bucks. I mix my paint and just throw them away, little plastic containers. I think they're one ounce. Um, you see it's a tiny little bit on the bottom. You don't need tons. And we're just gonna screw this guy in. I'm a little hesitant with this too. It's my first part work. I don't over tighten anything, so I'm just gonna be careful how I kind of go here. Okay, that's good. Okay, and doing left. Okay, 
Okay, cool. So these instructions are pretty easy, straightforward to go through. So we did that, that already, we're now on part five. So these have one on the back. I'm trying to figure out which is which here. So these have two on the back. So which is which, let's see. Oh, it's actually numbered on here, one and two. So, okay, so we're working on the, um, these guys, so it's gonna be number two is what we want. So two, two, don't need the ones. And then inside the two, we're gonna use Sorry, I'm just running for the instructions here. It's a little complicated how it's, it looks like the blue lens. Okay, just push fit into those. And I guess it goes. Oop. Okay, so got this in, this light here is numbered one and two, so it obviously goes in the two, the top bit. Um, a little tricky to get this lined up, not gonna lie, it's a little bit work off camera here. So let's um, see if we can get this screwed in. One of those things we need three hands. Let me see if I can get the screw on. There we go. Okay, so that one's in. Now we do this one, it's a little fiddly. So the tall, long peg kind of goes to the top. Just trying to get into that hole is the challenge here. Okay, so you gotta line the hole up on the inside there. And then go for it, jeez. I'm gonna try a different screw, that one's not working for me today. Let's try this one. This is very, very tricky. It's not easy. Okay. God, these screws going all over the place. I think this screwdriver is over magnetized, if that makes sense. This screwdriver. This is like super, super fiddly. I don't know why I'm having so much difficulty putting four screws in. But these things are tiny, they're going all over the place. They're not just going to sink into the hole. And that wasn't easy at all. <laughs> so those guys are in. That just didn't want to go in at all. Um, now we're going to go with the um, these guys, which are going to be the 11 fog lights. Again, just gonna push the lenses in. Excuse me. There we go. They look the same to me, I don't think it's a left and a right. Same deal, we're gonna push it through. That, 
that one is a lot easier than the other ones. And a PSO4, one of the little screws. Okay, this one's starting to go in. And that is part one done, finally, so there you go. The lights are in, there's some LEDs go behind here too later on, but um, yeah. Whew. That was really tricky, putting those little screws in the back. I'm not sure if it's because I'm using a cheap screwdriver, or if I'm just new to part works, if I'm working around the camera, around the tripod, or what the deal was, but just get those four little guys lined up and in there was really kind of tough to do. It's, the screws were so small, again, I just wanted to, I think this screwdriver was over-magnetized, I just want to follow the, the, the screwdriver around rather than go into the hole. Um, so, so next time we'll definitely use my own one, I think. But um, anyway, we got through part number one, which is uh, this guy, which is looking good. Um, everything looking good thus far. So now we put that to the side, and now we can start with a tire, which is part number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some water up, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so here's part two. Um, two halves of the rim. The tire, which is really nice, it has good gear on it. I was worried it didn't have any detail on, but it's really nice. It's got the um, all the numbers and markings on here. Eagle F1. Um, yeah, really nice tire. Again, you see the size of this beast. Um, I mean, you got the uh, the rim here for uh, what's this? The um, this is central rim part, and these are external rims. Again, I put my um, screws in my box here, and what we're going to do first is we're going to take this part. Let me kind of move this stuff out of the way. And um, on the inside, I want the screws. And we're just going to line the screws up. The holes like that, it just sits. And we're going to screw that in with the PS05. And I just got a saucepan of water just um, heating up on the stove behind me while I do this. Then what we do is we drop the tire in and um, for a couple of minutes. To... Okay, P is plastic, so I'm not going to um, use any oil. Don't stress the plastic, so I'm just doing a little bit of time just to tighten it all up. Gets in. That's good. This is really heavy, this is solid metal. Um, okay, but it looks like this kind of goes on, kind of got to line the holes up. Like that, and then you're going to screw those in with DSO2, which is a metal screw. So I'm getting my little bit of oil out, Oop. and what well, three screws? Oil, and I gotta say, these are way easier to use than those little tiny um, PSO4 screws. They're a nightmare on that, that front grill. Again, just put them loosely, then I'll come back and tighten them all up in a minute. Okay. Again, be careful not to over tighten these guys. That's your um, rim. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get the um, drop this in some hot water. Um, it says 75 degrees Celsius, 167 Fahrenheit-ish. I don't have a thermometer, so I'm just going to heat some water up, drop it in for a couple of minutes, and then we'll fish it out and we'll try to get it on here, I guess. All right, two minutes <laughs> using my um, cooking utensil right here. Fish it out and burn my fingers, and um, let's see how we go. So it looks like on the picture that. It goes that way with, I mean, ties go a certain way, and that looks like it goes forward with this look at the image here. So I guess we're just going to check the water out. I 
because it's a plastic, so it's not going to rust. I don't know. Um, so it goes that way, and we're just going to basically just get it in there, I guess. There's a method or madness to this, but I guess I'll just get it in. No, oh, but that was easy. <laughs> I'll spend the rest of all that for minutes and um, just pop right in. So awesome. So that's the way it goes. You got that on the outside, and the tread goes that way forward. So the wheel, I guess. Um, yeah. Wow. That was easy. I guess the hot water, the trick. I was expecting to wrestle that bad boy for minutes on camera, and but yeah, we're good. Um, well, awesome. Just looking. I don't know if it's supposed to go a certain way to valve stem or anything. I'm just checking here. No, I think we're good to go. So that is it. I mean, wipes all that water off. So we're done. So the wheel's done, which was actually easy, and the oh, front part here. So that's part number one for $1.95, which is a bargain. It gets a lot more expensive than that moving on. But so there we go. So that's done. Um, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It's been a little bit different to normal. Um, it's kind of nice to kind of do a variety of things in different projects. So still modeling nonetheless. So this is part number one done. I'll come back in about 21 days or so and do the rest when I get the next pack. Um, just with the way supply chain is globally right now, I don't think they clockwork 21 days. So I think you kind of get them as it when you know kind of as is um so uh, some flexibility i think is required you know with this kind of stuff is i i don't think it's going to show up bang on 21 days it might be a little bit longer or shorter whatever but anyway so that was pretty fun to do those screws are a nightmare there but other than that um looking really good so i got one tire well one wheel and the front end kind of started on thanks for watching catch you next time bye